All right, peace of Christ to all. Today we are going to answer a new topic about Islam. Uh, you know, the Muslims' propaganda is very amazing, and for sure, the Muslims' propaganda work only if you are ignorant and a fool. Uh, I found a video which uh, been seen by almost almost three million and a half, uh, even though it's made just uh, in March uh, six. In the beginning of this video, the Muslims they promoted, which means it was a paid ad, uh, which means it was pushed uh, to be in the front page of YouTube so they can get a lot of views. Uh, now the name of the video is <clears throat> 10 lies you were told about Islam. So there is 10 lies you were told about Islam. Uh, what we will do in this video, we are going to expose that the 10 lies you were told about Islam is true. And the ones who made this video are nothing but a liars. So uh, let us see together how truthful Muslims are and if you can really trust a Muslim after you watch this video. You know, the funny thing about Muslims, they assume, they assume that you are a person who is going to watch their video and you will never check if what they say is true or not. In my case, I assume that all of you are intelligent human beings and you should not take even what I say to you for granted unless I show the proof or you find the proof yourself. Uh, if we start with the video, we will find the following. Um, number 10, Muslims hate the West. Online news publication, Now the End Begins, which has over 150,000 followers, stated that all Muslim children are taught to hate the West. So this is supposedly is a lie. Well, you know what? The Quran is full of verses saying, you Muslims cannot love anyone but Muslims. And I will show you an example so you can see how truly the person who made this video and whoever behind him, I think is an Iranian Shia, because he tried to, to praise the Iranian government and the Iranian regime. And this is telling me a lot about him. If you go to chapter 3, verse 28, it says that a Muslim man cannot take you as a friend unless, if a Muslim man, he take you as a friend for real, he is, he became an apostate. Read with me carefully. I, I'm just trying to save time. So you guys, you can read, all right? This is chapter 3, verse 28, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. You can contact them for those who do not believe this is that this is a government. This is owned by the king of Jordan himself. The Royal Ahl al-Bayt Institute of Islamic Thought, Amman, Jordan. And all of us, we know Amman, Jordan is run by the king of Jordan, who is supposedly, he claimed that he is himself from the family of Muhammad. This is why he's very corrupt. No wonder. Now, here it says it clearly, that a Muslim man, he cannot take non-Muslim as a friend. He cannot take a disbeliever as a friend, as an example, like a Jew or etc. And not only this, if any one of the Muslims who seek might and honor by taking the hypocrites, or which means supposed to us, and disbelievers as friends, he has no connection with Allah, and he has no honor, no mercy, no protection, which means he is an apostate, and his blood is free for Muslims to hunt him down and kill him. Unless... Unless you bet you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, and taking it as uh, taking it what to be a friend for them as a security, saving yourself from them by speaking a friendly way toward them while your heart dislikes this. And there is many documentaries, by the way. Even there is one is made by the BBC itself. And later the Muslims they sue the BBC and they force them to take it off from the from the internet. If somebody have it, please can post it under the video, uh, and you can watch it. You will see how the sheikhs they are teaching kids and youth that the the the, the non-believers are our enemies. We should hate them. We should kill them, etc. Now it's in front of us, and this is the Quran. This guy is giving us a speech, but he could not show us where where he got this from. You see, when I when I give you. Uh, when I talk to you, I don't give you a speech. I'm showing you what I'm getting this from. But in the case of those people in the video, they try to make it, oh, this is a fabricating, a fabrication study 
uh, the numbers are not accurate. Not all Muslims hate you. Like, like come on, what what do you mean? Not all Muslims hate us. It's 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 uh, it's not allowed in Islam, even to have your father. And your brother. If we go to chapter nine, chapter nine, verse number twenty-three. <clears throat> All right. Even your brother from your blood. Imagine a brother. You have him from your blood. I'm not talking about now. Somebody is from France and he is from Iran. I'm not talking about someone who lives in Japan and you live in Syria. I'm not talking about I'm talking about someone he is a, from your family a family member you cannot love a family member a brother or even a father if he is a disbeliever oh who you believe choose not your father nor your brothers well, for sure, he'd explain to you, even those who are Mecca, for sure, this is in the time of Muhammad in Mecca, right? But this goes for everybody. At that time, it was people in Mecca, but it doesn't matter. People who are Muslims are not allowed to have a friendship, good relationship, and love those who they are not Muslims, even if they are their father and their brother. For what the reason? If they choose this belief instead of believe, so what is the reason for hating them? They choose disbelief over belief. And this is shown us that this is the case. It's not about people of Mecca. It's about anyone. Anyone you choose that disbelief. What is the reason? The reason is it exists today. So the, 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 the verse will go for you. If you are my brother if from my family, you are born from the same mother, the same father we have. But I am a believer. You are a disbeliever. I'm not allowed as a Muslim to take you as a friend. Even as a friend. Not even as a brother. You are no way is my brother. In Islam, only, only Muslims are brothers to each other. All right? If you are not a Muslim, you are not a brother. And you cannot be a brother for non-Muslim. For, sorry, like, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, in order to be my brother, it doesn't matter if you are from... Let us say from Dagestan in Russia uh, or the Soviet Union before, and you are from different nation, different ethnic, no problem. You are my brother in the religion, and you are not my brother, even if you are from my mother. Even if we have we share the same uh, family, this we have the same the same uh, appearance. That would not be reason for me to take you as a friend or to be close to you. For it is forbidden. So when this guy, with his lies, he says to us, in Islam, this is not true that Muslims, they hate non-Muslims. So then how the Quran forbid you even to take your brother to love him, even your brother from your family. And Muhammad, he said it clearly, the believers are brothers. Anyone else is not. You know, if we go to the Quran right now, or we search for it. In the front of your eyes. Chapter 49, verse number 10. Who is the brotherhood? What is what is the relationship in Islam between the brotherhood? It's only by believers. The believers are but single brotherhood. So make peace between the Muslims. Not only not, not between you and the non-Muslims, no. Those are your brothers. In chapter 9, verse 23. You cannot even take your brother and your family. So the first thing in this video, it's absolutely a lie. And we prove that this person is not genuine as usual. Nothing new, really. Muslims are, are, are people of deception. Lie number two. <clears throat> number nine. Terrorist training camps. 
You know the funny, he is focusing in uh, uh, training camps in USA, etc. Like, are you telling me that Muslims, if they can afford to have a training uh, uh, camps in USA, they will not do it? However, all the documentaries is made, they have a radio, uh, video footage. And you know, in USA, if you present something like this in TV, this is will be called, will become a public public slandering if you don't have a proof, which means you can go to jail for doing that. So the Fox News or those people who made this documentary against someone who live in USA, if it is not true, those people they can take them to court and they can make them pay a lot of fines, especially Fox News, and they can really cause them big big problem because this is public slandering. If you make an accusation against me in USA and I can prove that you are lying about me, I can send you to jail. At least I can make you pay millions of dollars. So what about you Muslims? You sue them and prove to us that it's not true. They have video surveillance and they are playing it in TV from your camps in USA. So Knowing them engaging in guerrilla warfare training at that Islamburg compound. Okay, so Islamburg, <laughs> upstate New York, they have weapons, it's private property. Right. All right, they're training on the property. Can they See, this is a video, this is why the quality of the video is not good, because they are recording from, from far away. They are not allowed to enter, this is a private property, you know. And as you see, they are, they were, they are having weapons and they train them with, with arms. Now you tell me what for. So he's saying this is a lie. What a, what a liar you are. Let us continue for, this one is easy to prove. Let us go. And by the way, I advise you to watch this the documentary because all of it is documented and all of it is proven with the proofs, not only speeches. All right. On here. That's led by Suraj Wahaj, one of the most radical imams in the country, yet he manages to be a rock star speaking at Muslim events across the country yeah, and college campuses. He's going to be in Dallas this weekend in Garland, Texas. Yeah, for the, the one who teach terrorists, in the same time, the Muslims, they say he is a good guy. Anyway, let us go to lie number three, saving time, because there's nothing here really much. He spent too much time in this one, which is very easy to prove. And actually, Care, Care, for those who do not know, is the daughter of Muslim Brotherhood and the founder of Care. He is a Hamas member, <laughs> you know, a terrorist group, very well known one. Let us continue. Where is the lie number two? Oh, sorry, sorry, we are we are moving the wrong video. Yeah. All right, here. Let us continue here. So, where is the lie number three? <clears throat> here we go. Number eight, no go zones. No go zone. So he want to say to you in Europe, really, we don't have no go zone. But let us say, let us say for the sake of argument, this is not true. It's very well known that if you go in a Muslim area, demonated by Muslims, you will, they will treat you like garbage. And if you ever have a problem there, they will beat the hell of you. Now, is the no go zone is something allowed in Islam? Absolutely. Not only allowed, it is an order by Allah to, to establish a no-go zone for the unbelievers or any clean. If we type here the word najis, which means filthy, dirty in Arabic, it says in chapter 9, verse number 28, al mushrikun means those who don't associate, they associate God with God or atheist or Christian or whatever. They are najis, which means they are filthy. All Muslim translation you, you try, they will say to you that the unbelievers, they are najis, which means they are unclean. All right? They are unclean. You can, you can change any translation you want. You want to go to Big Tal, you can go to anyone you want. All right? The fact the word unclean here is not accurate. The word should be filthy, like you are a person coming from the sewage. So what, what if you are any clean, which means you are not a believer? You are not allowed to no-go zone. If you go in the no-go zone, you will be slaughtered and you will be killed. As simple as that. For this is a holy ground 
for only clean people non-muslims are filthy and if they enter this ground we kill them so this is the no go zone what do you mean you have no go zone in islam islam is the first religion to practice no go, no go zone actually you go you go right now and search for uh, <coughs> uh muslims only a highway oh i'm typing in Arabic. sorry let me fix that muslims only just type muslims only saudi arabia and you click at images <clears throat> do you see it the no go zone it's a practice officially and legally in every street in Saudi Arabia. All the areas around Mecca and Al Medina, you will see a sign like this. It says non Muslims, Muslims. So, what will happen if you enter the road of the Muslims, which is in a green? You see that the one in non Muslims is in red. Uh, your blood will be shed here. The one here is a green piece. Don't worry. So, what happened if somebody took the wrong exit? They will slaughter you for you enter a holy ground land and you are a filthy creature. So you see how we expose the liars? No go zone, huh? You don't have no go zone. You are the first one who ever in the history who create no go zone before the white people who did it in Africa. Islam is the religion of racism and hate. And as long as we are talking about hate, Islam does not teach hate for non-believers. You know what? Is it in the Quran it says I will spread hate and enmity between the Christians specifically? Let me type it for you. <clears throat> yeah, we don't want to mention, we don't want to, uh, you know, we, we don't want to forget this that you know that this uh, this uh, verse, for it's very important. Chapter 3, verse 20, 118. Actually, there's many, many verses, you know. Uh, we, can, uh, we can show you not only this one. Chapter 3, verse 118. Chapter, uh, uh, it's always about preaching hate to make you hate others. But in verse number 514, it says it clearly, Allah will spread hate and enmity between the Christians until the judgment day. Allah himself is the God of hate. He have a target to spread hate between the Christians. So we string them with enmity and hatred between one to other. Let us go to number uh, three, lie. Or let's go here. Uh, what is the lie with you? All right. Let us go. What is next? Here we go. There's a guy here. All right. Let us see what this one is. <clears throat> Number seven, Islamic terrorist world domination. You know, he will say to you, most of people who killed in USA, according to a uh, reference, are uh, killed by criminals. But, you know, the Muslims, they are very much deceiving people. They will not tell you that most of the criminals in jail are Muslims. He will say to you, the most of the numbers of people who are killed in the USA or in the West in general, they are not killed by terrorists, but in you know in crimes, in murder. But he will not tell you that most of murders is done in the West by Muslims. You believe it or not? You can go right now and search, and you will find that the majority of people, the population of of uh, of uh, jail inhabitants are Muslims. It doesn't matter what country it is. You go all the way in Europe, in Sweden, in Norway, in France, in England, in, in USA, in Australia, you will see number one customer for jail are Muslims. As an example here, they are showing you. The current issue of New Yorker report that according to the Paris-based to Paris -based Iranian uh, uh, Soviet uh, Farhad, etc., this is an Iranian guy who made a study. Iranian guy like him. The one who made the study is an Iranian Muslim. 
of a France 64,000 prisoners up to 60% are Muslims so even the crimes is done by normal criminals most of it is done by Muslims this means 60% of the crimes in France is done by Muslims but the Muslims in France are not even 8% This is mean the crime percentage between Muslims increase up to seven double time because eight percent sixty percent you do the calculation <clears throat> then we need to ask ourselves why same he is you know he's giving you in different uh, different places There is 9% in USA are prisoners, but Muslims in USA is not even 1%. Less than 1%. Muslim population was less than 0.6%. It's not even 1%, but in jail they make up to 8 or 9%. You see the fabrication of those people which mean even in a normal crimes and by the way muslims they favor to do crimes against non-muslims because that will make him feel not guilty so he attack a jewelry store owned by a non-muslim for this is an islam is not a, it's not a crime it's a crime in the in the in the court of usa but for him he is not guilty so he's a good guy even the muslims will not condemn him for taking new jewelries for you are a christian if a muslim he robbed a christian or a jew or an atheist he is not guilty for he is not committing any crime for simply this is allowed in Islam and he have no guilt with it. And there is tons of research. You can go and search about every country of your choice. You will find that number one customers for jail are Muslims. I'm not making those things up. And this is then as this religion for sure increase violence and teach violence because you know why it's not happening between atheists what the difference between someone is an atheist and someone is a Muslim someone is a Christian and someone is a Muslim someone is a Buddha what about the Buddha why they don't present in France you know or in in, in, in USA almost the Buddhas in USA is almost the equal number of, of, uh, of uh, Muslims but still we don't have the number there is no way we can compare we cannot compare so the deception is amazing when Muslims they speak because they assume that you are not really going to think deep about what they say. You will just let it go and then you will believe it. And they pay a lot for this advertising and the Muslim, you know, the, the good thing about Muslims, by the way, which, you you know, sadly, uh, Christian, Jews, atheists, they don't have that. Muslims, they support each other like crazy. You see, in order to reach out three million, four uh, 400,000 in in a month or two or etc uh, that's need a lot of support it's just a normal video it's just a stupid video full of lies but how the video will go up to that like major of, of uh, view because Muslim they support their religion Christian they don't like I make a video let us see how many Christians will copy it and download it and spread it around very few five six people out of thousands they watch it most of the Christians they just let it go they don't they don't they are not active Muslims they active even though they are following the devil you ask a Muslim we want to build the mosque in France we want donation even the poor Muslim he will donate not because he's good, by the way, because they dream about controlling the West. You say to Christians, we want to build, we want to make a center, will cost very little to, to train Christians about Islam, so nobody will deceive them, or to, to train missionaries, etc. Who want to help? You will not even get one person respond to you. And this is what I face in every, you know, every day in my life. How many Muslims they got three millions view for such a stupid video full of lies? 
You tell me and you think about it. And for sure, the Christian will not feel guilty for not supporting us because simply uh, you support yourself. You see, uh, or in the in the best scenario, you will say, "God help you, brother," right? As if God, He will send a viewer for my YouTube. As if God work in YouTube. As if God, uh, He send money in bank. As as of God, He send uh, uh, food for the poor, uh, uh, for the one who in the street. It is us who feed them, not God will send the food. God. He used the good ones of us to do good things. But if there is nothing good of us, no good things will be done. Let us continue. I'm just sharing with you from my heart, so don't be upset for what I say. Okay. Celebrating 9-11. Muslims didn't celebrate 9-11. This is not true. You know, you can search right now in YouTube, and you will find there is many videos about Muslims celebrating 9-11. He will say, somebody says he saw them in New Jersey. I don't know if this is true, happened or not, but I believe it strongly if the Muslims, they can celebrate anywhere in the world, they will. Every Muslim, he will be happy in his heart to see America destroyed. For this is the end of the night. Uh, happy to, to know that thousands of Americans have died in this sneak attack, and there you see a V for victory sign. Yeah, they are happy to see, and people, they, they you know, in 9 11, I remember, uh, you know, I have many relatives and people in the Middle East, they told me that the sweet disappear from the market. You know what disappear mean? All kinds of sweets, all kinds of candies disappear from the market for everybody is buying and spread it for free in the, in the street. Everybody is happy. Everybody is dancing. The very atmosphere, the V sign from victory being displayed uh, in uh, East Jerusalem today among jubilant Palestinians uh, that the United States have been subject to this attack. What are we to make of that, Jennifer? Uh, are we, uh, after Arafat may issue this condemnation, look at this. We're seeing uh, people applauding, clapping, smiling, uh, happy to to know that thousands of Americans have died in this sneak attack and there you see a V from So is that an Islamic behavior or this is an, a, a Buddha behavior? We will not see one Buddha person who was celebrating 9-11. Even people in Vietnam, you know Vietnam, we have a war with them. We did not see one person from Vietnam is dancing in the street for very shameful act to do. You know, when we hear about Muslims getting killed in Iraq or etc., we don't dance in the street. When there's more than five, six thousand people, they die in the Hajj under the feet of each other. Do you see Christians or Jews dancing in the street? Do you see any people making parties celebrating this? If you ever see that, those people are sick, and this is not 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 uh, not ethical. But you know what? Everything in Islam is not ethical. What is in Islam is, is ethical? Nothing. You will be a fool to believe for a second that Islam has something ethical. Let us continue with lie number five. Here we go. ISIS represents Islam. Oh, this is a lie? He will say to you, the fact ISIS, most of those who they killed, they killed Muslims. Father Douglas Al-Bazi, a Catholic parish priest in Erbil, Iraq, stated that anyone who still thinks ISIS doesn't represent Islam, know they are wrong. ISIS represents Islam 100%. In reality, ISIS is not just un-Islamic, it is anti-Islamic. Really? <laughs> you know... When, when this guy, he says to you that ISIS, they killed a lot of Muslims, this is a true and false at the same time. Why? Because ISIS, they kill Shia, and Shia are not Muslims for the Muslim Sunni. Every Sunni considers the Shia not Muslims. And every Shia considers the, the, the Sunni not Muslims, which means both they believe it's okay to kill each other. And this is the nature of Islam. So if ISIS is fighting Shia, not because Shia are the, the, the first target, but because they are trying to control a land is owned by the Shia. <laughs> but if somebody else in their way, like the Kurdish, the Kurdish, <clears throat> they don't believe in Islam. Most of them, they are atheists. 
the, the Muslim Sunni the same for them those are uh, those Kurdish are not Muslims because they don't believe in Allah no more if then uh, whoever is in their way they will fight him because those are not Muslims actually and even if you are a Muslim from different sect you don't believe that the Khalifa is a Khalifa they will kill you but this is the nature of Islam you see the Quran say clearly that you can and you should fight even Muslims to avoid fitna this is the teaching of Islam what fitna mean problems so let us say there's two kind of Muslims they have a problem we decide which one is the one is not practicing Islam correctly and we should kill them all chapter 2 verse number 193 you can read any translation of your choice and fight them fight them in Arabic by the way mean which means fight to kill not just boxing all right fight them until there is no more tumult or problems or oppression and their prevailed justice and faith of Allah so what is the prevail the faith of Allah but if they cease let there no hostility except those who practice oppression by the way the translation is very false and very funny what the verse here is saying that fight them until there is no fitna fitna there is no problems those groups who cause the problems they are not uh, you know uh, practicing islam etc uh, you know then we have we have uh, we have to fight them until they stop doing what they are doing so it's a duty in islam Hmm. And here they are talking about persecution. What persecution? What persecution? Muslims are the one who persecute everybody. Uh, let me show you a different verse, just to show you how they how they lie in their translation. Chapter eight, verse number thirty-nine. This one will be more clear. Look at this. In here, uh, actually, it's uh, uh, hold on. So the unbelievers of now, this etc., the unbelievers etc., 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 and fight them until there is no uh, oppression. The same thing, right? But in fact, that of those people, they practice the salah and they practice the belief, then stop fighting them. So what is the oppression? The oppression that those people they don't want to practice Islam. Uh, let me see. Uh, for some reason, it's not like there's. Uh, there's actually there's many examples of of uh, of uh, of the Muslims. This search engine is not good. Here, you know, here Islam actually described what uh, in chapter 2, verse 193, what the fitna is about. Let us see what this verse here. And fight them until there is no oppression. And if and there prevail justice and faith of Allah. If you read the few verses actually before it and few verses before after it, you will see if those people they practice Islam, if those people they follow the true Islam, then there is no fitna. Fitna is something happening between Muslims, not between you and non non Muslims. So if you are a Muslim and there is one of the groups of the Muslims are not practicing the correct Islam, it's a duty for a Muslim to fight those groups. So this is a very nature of Islam to fight those who don't practice Islam correctly. There is tons of verses, you know, you can read, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, let us say, I'm trying just to remember which one is good one to give as an example. <clears throat> uh, in chapter 8, verse number 39, it says, This is a very great example to, to show you. But however, in the translation, you will see the dishonesty. 
until the deen all is for Allah. I'm trying to find a better translation, but sadly I cannot. This is why I want to work in my own translation. <coughs> oh, this is Russian, so hold on. I'm trying just to find one honest translation. One, just one. It's impossible. You know, it's very hard uh, to, to, to find one honest translation made by Muslims. Yeah, for honesty is uh, is a real uh, currency in Islam. Yeah, it looks like that we will not find. Uh... Maybe this one will be better. Let's see. And fight them until there is no more fitna. What is fitna? Look here. Look here how the translation changed. Finally, we find something to expose them. Fitna is disbelief and worshiping other along than Allah. So fitna is not you are causing a problem. Fitna is you don't want to practice Islam. This is what fitna. This is the reason for you for them to fight you. So if the Kurdish they don't want to uh, the women they don't want to wear hijab. This is fitna. If they don't want to pray to Allah, this is fitna, even though they are Muslims by name. So fitna is not what they are saying. They are saying in the other translation, it's oppression. What oppression? Who is the one oppression? Who? What? What oppression? All what they are saying here simply, we fight them until they practice the correct Islam, or we kill them. And that's mean any Muslim group have the right to fight other group under the law of Islam. For you know what I can say, I can accuse you in a second that you are not practicing the real Islam. This is why we see Al Qaeda is fighting ISIS too, and ISIS is fighting Al Qaeda, and the Muslim Brotherhood is fighting fighting uh, 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 in the side of Al Qaeda against ISIS because they are more close. For Al Qaeda originally was a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Even Osama bin Laden himself was a Muslim Brotherhood mem member, and uh, as Zawahiri right now the. The, the 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 president of uh, the the leader of Al Qaeda he was an ex president you know uh, 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 Muslim Brotherhood member so any group in Islam disagree with the other group legally they can kill them but this is the nature of Islam don't tell me because ISIS are killing Muslims that would make them not Islamic actually they are very Islamic for they are practicing the verse in the front of you. Fight them until there is no faith but Allah. Shia are not Muslims for the Muslim Sunni, and they are not practicing the true faith of Islam, so we can kill them according to Islam. Same with the Shia believe that Sunni are lost. They are not even Muslims. They are kuffar, and their blood is for free. And this is why we see that the two forces are fighting each other and eating the blood of each other with no mercy. For this is Islam. Let us continue. What else? Okay, lie what? Muslims support violence. <laughs> he want to he want to prove to us that Muslims don't support violence. Actually, I answered about this already when I spoke about the jail. Muslims support violence. The Center for Security Policy, a U.S. think tank known for engaging in conspiracy theories, claimed that 25 percent of Muslim Americans support violence against other Americans. Donald Trump subsequently used this anyway we answered this already there's not no need for we showed you that number one people in jail not only in Islam support violence we show you that in Islam even you can hate your own family and you should fight any group Muslim group if she is not they are not practicing Islam correctly actually if we go to the hadith you know you will see uh, let us see here Uh, let us open different You know when Muslim he said I've been ordered to find all or to fight all mankind Muhammad he was a bad person The messenger of Allah he said I've been commanded 
I have been commanded to fight all mankind. Until they say there is no God but Allah and there is no prophet but me. So are you saying to me your prophet was a violent person, he is a bad person, and you Muslims are better than him? Your prophet, he have a target to fight all mankind until they convert to Islam. But you Muslims are better than your prophet, you will not do that, right? This is what he's trying to say to us. The best of the Muslims, what is required from a Muslim to be a good Muslim? The best of the Muslims is the one who bring other people with chains in their necks. This is the best Muslim. You are the best of people. By the way, Muslims, they, they, they say that Jews are uh, uh, fascists. They believe that they are the chosen people. The Muslims, they believe in that they are the chosen people, actually. Not only this, they believe they are the best, not only chosen. There's a huge difference between chosen and the best. Hmm? The Quran says, you are the best nation now what is the best nation mean in Islam let us see how you can be a best what is the what is going to make Muslims really the best nation like what exactly an act they need to do to reach that point to be the best he says explaining chapter 3 verse uh, 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 110 the best of for mankind are those who bring them with chains in their around their necks. What? This is what will make you the best until they embrace Islam. <laughs> this is what will make a Muslim the best Muslim. Is not creating or discovering electricity. Or a computer machine or making a car or making an airplane or making a phone for you No, the best to make you a great Muslim and to make Muslims a great nation is to fight you by using violence putting chain around your neck and bring you into Islam and force you to embrace Islam but yet this Abdul he is trying to say to us in Islam this is not true we don't support violence when the whole life of Muhammad is about violence. You know, when Muhammad, he said, I will not allow two religion in, in Jazirat al-Arab, which means the Arabian Peninsula. There's no two religions in the Arabian Peninsula. How Muhammad will accomplish that? By peace or by war? Imagine I say now, I will not allow two religion in USA except Christianity. How, how I can do that? The Muslim will not agree, the Jews will not agree, the atheists will not agree, the Buddhists will not agree, everybody will disagree. How I can accomplish such a thing? To make only one religion exist in one land. The only way is I kill everybody who say no. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him, which actually the fact may Allah uh, 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 pray on him and salute him because he is God, and grant him peace, he said, two deans, deans in Arabic mean religion, two, two religions shall not coexist in the Arabian Peninsula. You tell me how you would do that. Imagine I say there's no democratic party. I am a Republican, supposedly, huh? or let us say mostly I support it this party so and there is no Republican no 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 Democrat how I'm going to accomplish that how I'm going to erase everyone who is Democrat if I say only Christian in USA how I'm going to erase the atheist how I'm going to erase the Muslims the Buddhist the Hindus the blah etc how I'm going to erase them this is about erasing others Nobody want to leave his religion, and it's not going to be hard, uh, easy to convert them. How Muhammad will accomplish this? By fighting them and killing them or expelling them from the country. And here we go, you see it. Two things shall not exist in the Arabian Peninsula, and therefore expel the Jews from Khaybar. So this is by violence or by what?
<laughs> he kicked people out of their house. Actually, he killed the people of Khaybar. He did not kill them. He did not, he did not expel them. He killed them all. He killed them. This is before he killed them. He slaughtered every Jew. And yet this liar, he want to say to you that in Islam, we don't, we don't encourage violence. Let us say something else. What else? Lie number what? In response to the vastly incorrect claims, prime yeah, yeah. Let us see. Okay, lie number number two: Muslim women are oppressed. Oh, please! Oh, really, please, guys. There is no way Muslim women are not oppressed. And he would say the funny. He would say at the end of his claim that the best example of women are not oppressed is women in Iran. <laughs> You can search right now for videos about women in Iran and you will find tons of this documentary made by Iranian. As an example, this is a documentary made by Iranian women who went to Iran. She's an American citizen. She's an Iranian. She had no reason to make her country look bad. She had no reason to make her, her people look bad. I advise you to watch it and you will see how disgusting Iran as a country in general, not only for women, for everybody, but it's specifically for women. Women in the street in Iran, if they walk and they are showing some of their hair, the police will come and will arrest them for showing their hair. The same as Saudi Arabia. The same garbage. But Iran under the Khomeini became number one prostitution country in the world. For this is a practice of Shia, which is called Muta. <laughs> To men. How far? How as far as you want. That's not enough. I won't come back if you're going to be that way. Women longing for a brighter future for their children. I haven't seen you in a while. Where are you headed? How much? I need five or six dollars. Do you think I'm rich? Like a mullah? That's Iran. And by the way, this is not something against the law in Iran. It's a practice by law because muta is a way to make living. Women, they go take off their panties, get paid for sex, temp they call it temporary marriage, but the fact is not marriage. The fact is prostitute. This woman, she sleep with a, with, a, with a new guy every day. She get paid, and this is Iran, because women, they don't have rights like everybody. I can show you how they hang people in Iran. Women in Iran, they are hanged on the street. They use the the trucks the, the one they use for uh, like uh, electrical uh, work they hang them in the middle of the street i'm not going to show you the videos but you can search them they hang them this is iran or stoning to death that is iran or beating them. This is Iran. And they say to us that women in Iran, uh, he give us the best example of women in the Middle East. He gave Iran. He, imagine. You see how filthy they are? How much lies they have. But all of this is done because 
those people, they assume that you will not search. And by the way, I, I, I don't want to forget to mention that women in, in not only in Iran, in Islamic countries, she have uh, half of the man of inheritance. The man, he can beat his wife. The man, he can beat his wife. Let's see. Is that an oppression? The Muslims, by the way, they would say to you, this is a light, light, light beating, which is absolutely false. I will show you a hadith where Muhammad, he supported a man. He did beat his wife until her skin became a greener than her clothes. Here it says, and those who you fear their misconduct, which means obedience, you fear. They did not necessarily do something bad. You fear. Those who you fear such a thing from them, beat them. Scourge them. Huh? No problem. As for those whom you fear rebellion, admonish them and punish them in the bed apart and scourge them. And if they obey you, seek no way against them. <laughs> so the way to make your wife obedience in Islam is to jail her in her bedroom. To jail her. You know, the, the, the word here is about abandoning them in the beds. It's about you jail them. It's not about you know, I don't have sex with them, by the way. You jail them as if they are goats. So they are not listening to you. Let us say, by the way, it's not about being disobedient. Like you say to your wife, uh, get me some tea. You don't like the way she said, okay, I will do it for you. You know, you don't like the way she said that. That is a reason for you to fear that she is going to be a rebellion against you. It's a sign of not being fully obedient, a slave. So what we do, we jail them in their rooms or we beat the hell of them. And then when they obey us, that's it. She became the servant, the obedient servant. And he will say to us, there is no oppression in Islam. In Islam, there is no witnesses for a Muslim woman in the case of a crime. Let us say there is a woman, she saw somebody killing somebody. That woman is not allowed to witness in the court. And if there is one million women, is still they are not, uh, you know, are not allowed to witness in the court. And if there is 10 billion women, is still they are not allowed to witness in the court for a very simple rule. In Islam, that, uh, you know, in order, to, uh, in order to be a witness, uh, you you have uh, let us say uh, you have to uh, to fulfill the requirement and the requirement is to be a male in the case of a crime in the case of writing a contract uh, only in the case of writing of a contract let, let us say uh, we have somebody you want to borrow money uh, from somebody all right Let's go here. Uh, let me use a different browser. This one is not coming correctly. Let us say you want to rent a house. Let us say you want to borrow money. Uh, let us say you want to, uh, uh, any kind of contract involve money. In this case, two women and one man at least, which means if there's two women only, they are not allowed in Islam. At least you have to have one male. But this is only in the case of contract. In the case of murder, women are not allowed 
to witness in the court period for a very simple reason they are not smart they are not intelligent and they are not trustworthy women in islam is considered as a devil she is a bad person and she is not equal to the man and she cannot be uh, 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 someone to trust in a case of a murder so let us say there's 50 million women 50 not 5 million let us say there's a 1 billion a human being they are females that is not enough for women to be a witness in Islamic court for simply the Quran forbid that from happening and it's not allowed uh, you know some Muslims they give you an excuse they say to you as an example uh, about chapter of Al-Baqarah verse number 282 that the reason the reason for that you know because women they have their period oh really what the period have this to do to do with this the women when they have their period they say they are just trying to give an excuse uh, when when women they have period those women they might do something wrong because they are emotional this is why uh, you know we you know we don't uh, uh, allow them to uh, to be witnesses okay you know what what about you ask them to come to witness when they are not having their period does that work <clears throat> let me go if I go directly to the verse because the, the browser here is not opening it I, I will try to go here that would be better maybe All right, that is better. So here it says it clearly, in the case of writing of a contract, you can have two, men, two, 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 uh, two women and one man at least to witness for contract. However, Muslim women, she is not allowed to witness in the case of a crime anything have a capital punishment muslim women are women are not are forbidden to be part of it and here it says it says two witnesses amongst you from among you free and under uh, other condition by the way if those women are slaves or the man is a slave he is not allowed to witness you cannot make a slave witness for anything only free men and free women they can witness so one Muslim man and two Muslim women, all right, of your choice, which means even if there are two women who witness the thing, if there is any doubt about them, then we reject them. So the man is not the case. Any man, any man, he's okay. Two women, we have to examine if they are accepted. So there's conditions again against the women to be even a witness in the court in the case of contract. Uh, of such a ye approve as a witness which mean if you approve them as a witness then they can be a witness from among the people we have a witness etc etc and then you will see here uh, let me see different translation give us more clear of this uh, let's see a general line Maybe less text, no, it's the same, a lot of text. All right. Let us see. The reason women, they cannot be witnesses in the court, because women, they are the error. They forget testimony. Uh, given their lesser, etc. So they, they, they have, they don't have accuracy. Women, they are stupid. They forget. They don't have 
a real they cannot you know uh, report the truth they report with error uh, the other one remembering so one of the Quran says the reason for two women to uh, to witness so if one of them error the other one remind her well what what do you mean remind her the other one she can error too because both are women you see how stupid it is so if one of them she error the other one remind her but the other one is not a male to remind her of something he she's a female too so she can do the same she's a, she can do the error for she is a female And this is only in the case, as we said, in the case of writing of a contract, but not in the case of a crime. In the case of a crime, women are not allowed to witness. All right? Not allowed. Uh, there is a book, it's called Kitab al-Hudud, you know, it, it have a section about that. It says it clearly that it doesn't matter how many women there are exist in the, in the, in the let us say, in the, in the crime scene. Uh, all those women, they are not allowed to witness. And the reason women are not accepted in Islam, as the Quran say, to witness for a crime. The Quran say clearly actually a human being as a male is not the same as female what is and the, 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 the male is not the same as the female And the male is not the same as the female. The Quran mentioned that in many places that male and female are not equal. All right. So uh, actually, even the uh, Muhammad he said in the Hadith uh, that women they have deficiency in their brain. He said, "Naqisat wa aqlin wa deen." Yeah. We did not delete the other the old text. Now we search. Here we go. Muhammad, he told the women, women, you be careful. Most of you I saw in my vision when I went to Allah, uh, when I go in my trip above, uh, above the donkey, the flying donkey, I saw that the most of people who live in hell fire are women. Women amongst you said, um, amongst them said, why is that majority of the women, they will be in hell fire? The prophet replied, cause you frequently and grateful to your husbands. In spite of your lacking of wisdom, and failing in religion all right so women they have lacking of his men of, of wisdom then he says then upon that this a woman she asked what is our deficiency in in, in, uh, in uh, our wisdom or our religion what is our deficiency muhammad he gave the answer he replied you lack your wisdom can be well judged from the fact that evidence of two women are equal to one man Muhammad himself is explaining the verse in the Quran. One man is equal to two women. So this is a proof of your lack of wisdom. So the reason for one man equal to one woman, for man is twice more wise than a woman. And the Quran verse says actually, if a woman she forgot the other one, she will remind her, which is a proving that the, the one who wrote the Quran is a stupid mental. Why? If you go right now to a party with your wife, <clears throat> Let us say there is a wedding party, a neighbor, a friend, a family, etc. And both of you, you came home and your kids, they ask you, hey, dad, what was the food there? You will not remember. If you ask the mother what people they were wearing, what kind of rings they have, what kind of shoes women they are wearing, what the suit, the, the, what the color of the suit, the guy will not even remember the suit he wore yesterday. 
women they remember details so what do you mean women they will not remember and men they will remember it is the opposite if you wear a clothes today and a woman she saw you and then you come again a month after wearing the same clothes she will notice you do not change your clothes if you change it she will notice it very easy and she will tell you what you were in a month ago in the case of man mostly they don't even remember what the food they ate in their lunch so obviously the discrimination is so big and so huge even in the heaven of Islam women they have no rights they are just sex slave the man he will get everything the woman herself is going to be a rewarded gift to the man what is the what is the reward for the women nothing one of the funny promises Muhammad he, he made for women in the heaven of Islam just to fool the women uh, he said to them in the heaven of Allah you women you will be 70 try 70 or 72 times more more pretty uh, I find that this is very stupid statement from Muhammad to say because if there is a three women each one of them she is double of the first one in her beauty and then you make all of them 70 times more pretty it's mean nothing changed you were ugly in earth you are ugly in heaven if you have two women and one of them she is twice more pretty than the first one woman and then you made both 70 times more beauty what the change zero <laughs> nothing changed because now she is the other woman she is 140 time more pretty and you are 70 time more pretty for already she was twice more pretty than you This is how stupid the religion of Islam and even the reward of a woman being pretty she will be pretty for who for the husband she will see one man in the heaven she will not see other man she will be jailed in her tent for eternity As we will see here in the verse, let me show you. Those tents, those women, they will be restrained. You can't even breathe. Your job is in the bed. You are a sex toy. So those women, they will be restrained for eternity. The man he go around have fun, etc. You know, but the women they are restrained inside their rooms, inside their tent, inside their bed, so the man can enjoy them for eternity. And yet this guy he said to us that women they are not oppressed. Muhammad he said uh, when he heard that uh, uh, a woman she became a leader for uh, for the Persian when the king of Persian he died a woman she became the, the queen this is the Persian before imagine and look at look 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 at Iran today women they are beaten in the street in the time of Muhammad women they became queens they rule a country they rule an empire actually not a country Iran at that time was one of the greatest empire and they used to be equally powerful the same as the Roman uh, how much he said there's no nation will prevail if their leader is a woman let's see the hadith uh, let us see here here we go And he said to us, women are not oppressed. Women are not allowed to be leaders in Islam. And this is not an oppression just because of her gender. One of the greatest leaders for England in the new history, it was Margaret Thatcher. 
Look at this stupid guy they have right now as a prime minister, macaroni guy. And look at the amazing Margaret Thatcher. She was a woman. Look at the potato, the rich people they have right now as a prime minister. And look at the rich, the prime minister, and, 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 you know, which was Margaret Thatcher. Which one you, you, will, you will wish to have again? If you go and read before this time, you will see how many queens they ruled Egypt, Syria, per Persia, uh, uh, everywhere. Whatever Islam goes, women, they became nothing but sex toys. We dress them with the burqa in a garbage bag. We open one little hole for them to see. And thank you, Allah, for opening that hole. Otherwise, they will go blind. And then we say that women are not oppressed in Islam. That is one of the most stupid statements ever a human being can say. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter really how much proofs and reference you give, you will find always somebody uh, come to you and say, uh, well, Islam don't oppress women. Uh, and even they might try to mention to you from the Old Testament. Look what Jesus said, by the way, about women and men. And most of people do not even notice. Uh, first of all, in the time of Jesus, men, they used to take advantage of women. This is why Jesus, he was so strict with marriage. It was not for the benefit of the man at all. The men, they change wives as much as they can. You get older, he go for a new one. She is younger. The man always, he maintained his look a lot longer than women. He's still in a good shape a lot more than women. Why? Because he don't get the bread. There's many reasons. So when you get older, this man, he will not really like you. He will go for someone she is 17 years old, 16 years old. This is why Jesus, he was so strict in marriage for the benefit of the women, so she will not be abused. This is why he made a marriage between one man and one woman to be equally in their rights. Someone will say to you, well, the Bible says that the man is the head of the house. We'll read the rest and you will see that the man, he should sacrifice himself for his wife the same as the Messiah sacrificed himself to the church which means the Messiah, he made the women equal to the church. Which is a holy ground for God. And just to show you how much women is appreciated in Christianity, Jesus himself, he chose to come to us through a woman, but no man. He was born of a woman. And that broke all the old traditions of people thinking women, they are dirty, women, etc. women, blah, 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 women, they have menstruation, women, women, women. Look, the Lord himself is born of Mary. And he is not born of a man. So, the teaching of the Messiah was revolution, like a revolution to free the women. Even when the Jews, they ask him, what about in the heaven? Like, you know, my, if, the, if the wife of my brother, she die, I'm going to have her. Like, you know, they think of the women as a property of inheritance. Look what Jesus said to them. He and she will not get married. They will be the same as angels in heaven. He and she equally will be equal to angels, same as angels. He didn't say he will be an angel and she will be his servant. He didn't say he will be the master and she will be in the tent for sex for him. He said he and she will be the same as angels. Equally, with no question, who is better? Actually, Muhammad, he said it clearly, like the funny, the Muslims, by the way, they say to you, 
the you know the, the Bible claimed the women for the sin. Uh, for the sin of Adam, the fact this is false. It is Islam who claim Eve for the sin of Adam. Just to show you the lies, like I saw some videos of Zakir Naik and those stupid liars, you know. You can read any any hadith you want. All of them they are accurate. According to Muhammad, the reason for women to betray her husband it is because of Eve, which means Muhammad he consider Eve and what happened between Adam and Eve that Adam was the victim of the betrayal of Eve. Do you see it? He was a victim. In the Old Testament, you will see that God punished them both equally. The man, he will stir, starve, he will ho work hardly, he will put his nose, his face in the mud to survive, to make, a, to make food for his family, to protect his family. And the women, she will be pregnant and etc. Both, they got punished and both considered the same in the sin. According to Muhammad himself, if no Eve, no women betray her husband, and the funny here, by the way, the Muslims, they say that they are against the original sin. Really? But if you think about this statement from Muhammad, obviously Muhammad is a believer in original sin. Are you getting my point? Because he is getting back in the sin of women to who? To Eve. This is mean the sin of Eve is the reason for every sin of women today for us as a christians we believe the sin of adam is the reason for us to be sinners today we don't say eve according to muhammad if no eve no women sinner today the betrayal here is about being unlawful and truthful and good bad women so the first bad woman was eve and men are the husbands are the victims the women are the guilty the husbands are the victims the women are the criminals and the husbands are the one who you know who is uh, the, the, the one who go to the hospitals because they are beaten by their wives they are betrayed by their wives you see how bad the women are but yet muhammad the hypocrite he got tons of those women in his house and in his bed. He hate women, but he want to have a lot of them. This is why Muhammad, he said that the women, she come in the image of shaitan. And she leave in the image of shaitan. Which means which mean image of Satan. The women come in the image of Satan and she leave in the image of Satan you see it and he want to tell me that women are not oppressed in Islam you made them equal to dogs equal to donkeys women they are the devil women they are the one who betray you know the prayer of a, ser a, a severe uh, can be interrupted by a woman a dog and a donkey what can disturb a, a prayer of a, of a man, of a human being? A woman and a doggy and a dog. And yet Abdul want to say to us that we Muslims, you know, we don't, uh, we don't practice violence against women. If you see in here, uh, this is an abuse against women in different way. This is a crime. A Jews used to abuse the prophet, a Jewish woman, and this 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 uh, respect him. A man strangled her till she die. The messenger he said, "There is no punishment for this." <laughs> this is not abuse. This is a crime. Uh, those are. 
Yeah, this is about violence here. Muhammad is burning, Muhammad burning people, Ali burning people, Ali burned people for leaving Islam, as you see here in the front of you. He burned them, he burned them alive. ISIS, they are not burning people for what? When ISIS, they are burning people for what reason? Because Muslims before them, they burn people. Khalid ibn Walid, the cousin of Muhammad, one of the most close to, uh, uh, family members to Muhammad, he killed the Muslims and he made him barbecue and he drank his soup. And he raped his wife and he took her as a slave. Actually, there's a video I played before, if you guys remember it, about this issue. Uh, I believe we cover everything those Muslims, uh, uh, they come with and we, we expose their lies. Uh, here there's a story about a, a blind man Look at the look at the religion who don't abuse women. Look at this. Look at the justice. A blind man had a pregnant slave who used to abuse the messenger. How she abused the messenger? The messenger is the king of his of his people. Who can abuse him? Uh, she said, I don't like the prophet, maybe I don't believe him is a prophet, etc. This is the abuse. And defame him. The blind man forbid her but she did not stop one night she began to slander the prophet so he took okay what happened he took an ox and placed it in her belly rest it and 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 kill her i don't know why this is keep coming all right the message of Allah was told about it, and then He said, "You know what? There is no, there is no punishment for for the, this is a crime. It's not a crime. It's okay. It's a good crime." A woman, and she is a pregnant. What about the baby in her in her belly? What is the fault of her? Like you know, let's say in Islam, it's a crime to insult the Prophet, for he is God. He is Allah. You cannot insult Allah. Okay, what about the baby in her belly? He killed two people now. It's okay. In Islam, it's okay. But women are not oppressed. I don't say that. Women are not oppressed, and Islam is religion of justice. It's okay to put an ox of a, of, of a Britney woman belly and kill her and kill her baby inside her, and this is justice in Islam. I hope that we uh, we gave you enough reasons to believe strongly with the proofs and reference you know what we don't do what muslims do we prove things with the reference in the front of your eyes if you want to learn more please don't forget you can read my books the deception of allah you can get from amazon and quran and science in depth this one refuted the Muslims' claim about miracles. It's full of treasure of information and reference you will never see anywhere. And then we have our new book, actually, which is Quran and Science, sorry, uh, uh, The Secret of the Arabian Prophet in French. For those who speak of French, feel free to tell your friends about it if you have any French speaker, like people who live in Canada, in uh, France. So there's many countries, actually, they speak French. And uh, uh, this book is really fantastic, and the translation is very, very, very good. All right. So uh, I hope you guys you enjoy your time with us. And if you have any question, uh, feel free to send me a message to this address. In case you have any question, and I will be happy to answer you. Until I see you again, I say God bless. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And I mean to that. Thank you.